Classically, story has been this thing that's intricately crafted for a long period of time. And somebody goes off and writes in solitude, and you work for years, and then you come out and you're like, here it is, I'm finished. Here, take it, world. So as my creative collaborators expand and I start to work with social scientists or data scientists or researchers, then I start to look at within the stories, especially in the purposeful storytelling side, because we're using story as a way for, as a vehicle for social good, we're looking at ways that we can measure certain things within the actual telling of that story. Can we measure the social impact of a story? Can we see where learning happens? Can we understand where somebody retains something, where vocabulary changed? What I became fascinated with is this idea of failing quickly and learning from that failure and, and rapidly prototyping things and, and mixing storytelling into that. I became really interested in this idea, well, how can stories be part of a research and development process? Can stories help to inform the design that I'm doing and can I get a better understanding of what storytelling is in the 21st century by rapidly prototyping and experimenting with what storytelling is and the way that people interact with it. So I, I naturally kind of gravitated towards processes that we would use when we would build software, we would build interactive experiences. And I said, wow, that's interesting. I wonder how I can start to dovetail those things together. So I just started you know, wanting to integrate more of that um, iterative design into what I did. Right now we're, we're doing a story where I found out about this really cool bracelet that's at MIT. It's called a Q sensor. And you can wear it and it can track your emotion in real time. And I thought, wow, that's an interesting thing. I wonder how I could make use of that. And we brought it into that uh, a project that we're doing around aging out of foster care. So we build an experience. People wear the bracelet. We can see where they're emotionally affected by the story that we have. And I thought, wow, that's an interesting tool for that particular story. I won't just use technology for technology sake. I'll use it in a way that I think is mining the themes, in a way that I think is working to help, um, you know, tell that story in a more efficient manner, you know, to make it effective. So when you look at the data that shows you, like, where the interactions were, where the retention was, where the learning happened, it starts to be this whole other way that you can interpret things, and it starts to help you design more efficiently, helps you design in a more holistic kind of approach. So I think the data is something that I'm really fascinated by because it makes stories like qualitative and quantitative, you know? It's like this thing of like, I'm not interested in, in it in terms of like, how do we use this data to determine what the outcome of the story is? For me, it's not about like a focus grouping thing. It's not about like a control issue around the story and homogenizing it based upon data points. For me, it's like, how can I take that data and then visualize it in really interesting ways? How can I design more efficiently from it? You know, and how can I use it as something that, that can help the creative process? Um, I think that there's my fear with it is that as we move closer into this realm of where you can, you can, you can drill down and you can find very specific things. And so uh, my fear is that it becomes a tool for homogenizing stories based upon risk aversion, you know, based upon like, oh my God, we're spending so much money to produce this stuff. We have to make sure it's going to be a hit. And in doing that, it kind of sucks all the amazing things out of it. So I'm interested in experimenting on the other side of that and saying, okay, how can you use it as an intuitive tool to help you better tell your stories or more efficiently deliver those stories or creatively push the envelope of what those stories can become? Hi, my name is Lance Weiler, and you should really subscribe to Thinker because I do too.